Hi there. Welcome to Rivertune's visual novel tutorial series. In our previous episode, we covered how to handle dialogue and how to change the name tags and how to set up your scene. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering how we can handle characters, their dialogue, their animations and expressions. With that being said, please do note that in today's tutorial, we will be using Cubism's Live 2D. So, to ensure that you, that you can follow along without any issue, go ahead and download the Live 2D SDK from the link in the description. Right, so we're back in Unity now. And the first thing we'll be doing is importing our Live 2D SDK. Now, I'm going to go into my download folder. I'm going to find my Cubism SDK, drag it into Unity. I'm going to grab that, drag it into Unity, and drop it. This will import the SDK into Unity, and it'll be a grand of time. Make sure that you've gone ahead and selected everything. Make sure everything on this is selected. Especially the sample models for now, because I it, it would actually be great if you do try the sample models out before importing your models. So make sure those are there, and we're going to go ahead and import. So it's going to import the package, and I'll be with you again once we've done importing. All right, so now that we've installed our Live 2D SDK, I've actually gone ahead and cleared my console, but. What we're going to do now is we're going to close Unity. So this is a very important step. Please um, do notice that do do note that you have to go ahead and re restart the project for the code in Live 2D to be compiled properly or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but it was something that the Live 2D documentation had mentioned. All right. So now that we've Restarted Unity. We're going to go into Assets, Live 2D, Cubism, Samples, and find a folder called Models. Now, under these models, you'll actually have a bunch of um, free, you know, free models available. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll be using a for, like a model called Natori. I'm going to grab Natori and drag him onto, see, onto the scene so I can see what he looks like. And look at him, he looks beautiful. Now, now, if Natori is tiny or doesn't appear on the screen or in your game view, that's completely fine. You did nothing wrong. Just go ahead and re go ahead and compile your project. Go ahead and hit play. And off and when you play, he should appear on your screen at some point. Now, afterwards. You can actually go ahead and leave play mode and Natori would be on your screen. So it's all fine and dandy. Now he's a bit tiny, he's a bit too tiny for my liking. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale him up. I'm gonna call him make him 10 by 10. Okay, that is a bit too large. Let's make him 6 by 6 in scale. There we go. And on the scene, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit W. And position him the way I want. Make sure he's on the center of the screen. Now, there we go. That is how the natural is supposed to look. Now, don't worry about the hand. It's all natural because those are his poses and whatnot. So, nothing to be afraid of, honestly. So, with that there, we have a model on screen. Now, we're actually going to leave this as it is for now. I'm getting good. I'm gonna grab Natori's folder. I'm gonna say Control X and go over to my resource folder. Now, if you don't have a resources folder, I suggest that you go ahead and create one. I suggest you do go ahead and create one by just typing resources. Make sure the resources is cap it has a capital R. The naming is very important. So resources, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say control V. No. Did not work. Okay, so in that case, I'm just going to say like show in show explorer. 
It'll take me to the Explorer. Go to Live 2D, some samples, models. Not sorry, I'm gonna grab that. Control X. Hop back here, assets, resources, and there's a new folder. New folder called Live 2D Models. So let me name it. Let me name the example Live 2D Models. Say all symbols. Open that. Control V. Now you hop back into Unity, and it automatically does everything for you, and you have your models notorious in there. Great. Next thing I'm next thing is I'm gonna grab Notori and actually drag him out into the into the Live 2D models folder because I don't want him to be in there. I want him to be easily accessible. So I'm gonna go into that. And there we go. Now we have Notori out here. It's, it's a, he's a prefab, so it's so you don't worry too much about him. Another thing would be anyway. We have our setup to showcase Notori, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab him. Gonna go into my scene. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm actually gonna go ahead and um, change his prefab value. So when you change the value in your prefab, it applies to all prefabs. So that is honestly pretty amazing, honest. Pretty amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, Scale is x is six, y is six, and ta da, we have him. Lovely. Now, we aren't gonna do much with Notori just yet. We need to first work on. We need, we need to first work on our name, like our our character image. You know, in in this case, we're gonna make Notori quote unquote God in this case, like in this scenario. So, I'm gonna go ahead and, get, I'm gonna go ahead and get, grab a. Photoshop asset real quick. Now, I actually have them all set up in a folder called PSD assets. I'm going to create that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a, create a PSD asset of Notori. In Photoshop, I already have a picture of God a PNG with a cute, with its transparent background, and I'm just gonna go ahead and export this into Unity. So then save as, go back out, assets, you know, tutorial, assets, resources, and make a new folder, call it character icons, character icons. Make sure the name is simple so that you know. Make sure it's a naming scheme that you can actually get behind. We're going to change the type, the image type, to PNG. We're going to call this God. God. It's God. Right. So we have uh, we have God in Unity now. Our resource folder, and we are all set to work on. Next, you know, so now we're all set to work on this tutorial. Again, a quick refresher you are gonna need a picture for your icon, your character portrait, as well as you're gonna need your live 2D model. So, in my case, I have Notori. I may or may not use another model called Epsilon, but for now, Notori is all I need. All right, so now that I have my, my scene and everything I need set up. We're going to go into our script and go to script reader. Script reader was the script we wrote in, our, in the last tutorial. And well, if you do want a link to the script, if you want the script, it's going to be in the description below. That's it. Let's go ahead and start writing our code. Now, we want to go ahead and change this picture here. And we want to change the source image surfaces and source image sprite. In, in, in our case, it, it would be God, so... Oh. Yeah, so in our case, it would be God. Now, to change this, we need to get this image and we're to change its sprite. Mm -hmm. So literally, it's a case of go, finding this image, going to the source image and saying, hey, the sprite is God. Now, 
we could do this in a in in, in fashion. Oh. Make sure God ha God got a capital G. You can name it whatever you want, but we can do this in a bit of a weird fashion, where we could go ahead and create a, an enum and then assign a bunch of stuff to it. And I did this in and I, this was honestly a really good way of handling it. Handling it. Um, check out DevBird's tutorial series on making visual novel if you want to see how he handles that. But I do not like his method. I mean, I've tried it. It's definitely, it definitely works, but in my case, it's not the best idea. So we're going to do something different. Also, it's not, it's like DevBird's um, technique won't work very well with Unity either. It, it, like, no, with ink anyway, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter in this case. But in our tutorial, we're going to all right, so in the last tutorial, we created a character portrait as a raw image. That was honestly a mistake on my part, and I'd like to apologize for that. But right now, we don't like we need to we need to change this to an image. Why? Because images use sprites as opposed to textures, and I like sprites as opposed to textures. So the information as me. What you can do is you're just going to go ahead and select the little, the drop down, the three little buttons here and go remove component on raw image and replace it with image. And boom, you're done. Also make sure it's white because when you when you put an, you're putting an image and it's black, it, turn, it, it acts as sort of like a silhouette. It works if you want to well, change the color of a thing, but honestly, I'm not going to get into that today. I don't have a reason to get into it. It's a pretty easy script if you want to figure it out, but for now, we don't need to get into it. Now, the idea is that we'd have a blank, we'd have, we have a blank portrait. We swap um, sprites between, so in this case, it's, if I want Keanu Reeves as God, so I want to swap that in. But we don't want to have a fancy, fancy e-dump system like we, like, push, like you know, a fancy system in, I don't know, we don't, we don't want anything fancy, we want something Simple and to the point. So let's go ahead and begin by saying, instead at the top of the script, by declaring, hey, we need an image. So public image character icon. This is a reference to our image, the thingy that is going to be used to change sprite. Next, we need to change the sprite. So we're going to create another method similar to, we're going to create an external function similar to the name function we created in the last tutorial. And like in the last tutorial, we're going to go ahead and create a new method, a public method, we're going to call it public void um, character icon. Character icon with a capital I. Put the two, they put put the little brackets down and say string name. Let's let's use name for the sake of consistency. Two curly braces and go ahead and make that up, fix fix it up. And now you must be wondering, why are you passing a string? What if we just pass an image? See, this is where the resources folder comes in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say va char icon is equal to resources dot load the two um, triangular arrows sprite the name so now we give the location the file location. So what this this bit of code does is that we go ahead and take a variable called character icon. We make sure it's a sprite. So we get a sprite called character icon, and we load a file from a from the from the resources folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop into Unity and check out our path. If my code is compiled now. Keanu Reeves icon is in character icon. So I'm going to go ahead and right click that, rename, and then control C, copy the name, 
going to go into Unity and within our inverted commas, we're going to go ahead and put that down and put a forward slash. Now, by doing this, we are looking in the character, in the character icons folder in resources. We're going to say plus outside the curl, outside the inverted commas and say name. So essentially, we are, we, are, we are looking for a folder with this exact name, which we pass in through, the, through this method, in this folder. So if I say God, I'm looking for I'm looking for a file like a file called God in the character icons folder and loading it as a sprite. Now, this is this 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 is not enough. We're gonna go next thing is we're gonna go and say character icon dot sprite is equal to cha icon and there we go gone ahead and written a very very simple a cat icon icon code now i'm gonna go ahead and grab this scroll up to our load story duplicate our previous function a previous function name it cha icon I can seem easier. String character name and just paste that thing here, and boom, we're done. So with that done, let's go ahead and test it in Inkle. Now in Inkle, we don't have it. We have we, did, we didn't bind it to Inkle, so we're just gonna say external. What was it? Icon. Looking down and say char name. Done. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go and see. Actually, since we already have this open, I'm going to control shift save and make a new icon real quick. The devil. Yes, I'm going to call it the devil icon. And I'm going to quickly hop in. You'll have two cat icons. My love mic got popped off my shirt. That's fun. Okay, so now we have the god and the devil. Okay, so I hop into this. You can see control. No, no. Icon God. I copy that. I didn't say I'm gonna swap to maybe like somewhere down here. And also grab control C. The devil. Well, oh, no, just devil. I was in the folder. See the devil. Let's see. God. I actually have like the icon flipping back forth, so we're gonna say let's put God the devil down here. God grab that. Grab there we go. Now we can change the name. Change the name again. There we go. So if all goes to plan, we should be having the icons flip-flopping between um, Keanu Reeves and Emperor Palpatine. Oh, silly me! I did not. I realized something that I had noticed. It grab this. The now reference meaning that there is the, the instance is not set. So there we go. And we hit space, yes. Hear me talking. Right. Um you can actually leave the code as it was or change it to the way you want, but this honestly does work. So now that we have our characters flip flopping between the cat icons. Let's go ahead and define Naturi, the character, the character himself who's speaking. Oh, 
All right, so now that we're done with changing our character sprite, we're going to go ahead and start getting a start to get our model of our, our live 2D model to move. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into resources, live 2D models. And remember earlier we dragged Notori's model into the resources folder. So we're going to go ahead and open up, open up his prefab. Go ahead and close off a bunch of these tabs. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. Half of these don't matter at the moment, except for maybe expression controller, but we'll get to that in a, while, in a bit. Now, when it comes to the animator, we need an animation controller. Lucky for us, Live 2D, when you import your model, goes ahead and actually creates an animation, like an, an, an animator for you. So I'm just going to grab Doris animator and drop it in the controller. Ta-da! We have our animator. Now, next thing we need to do is go into Unity and create our various animations. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and go, not gonna get it, go ahead and go through each individual animation because I already have Notorious model opened up in the Live 2D viewer. What I have, what I've found is that his motion zero is his idle motion, as you can see. Subtle expressions, but his arms move and his head elevate. That's the make his head move and effort, but you know, that's not relevant. He has like a slight, a slight breathing animation, and it's perfect. He's beautiful. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and start with motion number zero. So, I'm going to grab, drag motion number zero. I'm going to name it idle, right? I'm not going to do this for all the motions. Actually, there's only eight, seven of them. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to motion one. Motion one is a much better idle. Motion one is a much better idle. Is uh, okay. So motion two, motion two is a being intrigued. Intriguing. Yeah, I spelled that wrong, but. Intriguing. It's like, oh, that's quite intriguing. Hmm. Interesting. Number three would be at your service. So, motion number three. Go ahead and call that at your. I like to just call it bow. Bow. He bows in action. Motion number three. Four. Motion number four is check in time. Check time. Motion number five is ah, uh, yes, anime glass guy thing. Classic. Motion number five is going to be called. Right, trap card. Yeah, you replicate. Uh, you you. It's it's like the haha. You activated my trap card. That's a cool animation. Motion number six is over here. So motion number six. Look. Here, motion number seven is like leaning forward and like motion number seven is like an agree. Let's let's go ahead and call it a call it what it is. It's him agreeing to something. So motion number seven is I I just call it agree. Motion number eight is disagree. So, motion number eight is disagree. Now, we have all these states. They should all have one thing in common is that they all have to lead back into idle. So, we're going to go ahead and create a bool. 
boolean and call it if idle. Those of you who do, who 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 use the Unity animator know what know know how, know how easy it is. So you know how easy. I mean, how simple it is. Honestly, it's not that complicated. Even though it does look complicated. So go ahead and just create, make transitions, make make sure each transition the condition is is idle true. Agree is idle true. Um, make transition. Definitely is idle true. Check out make transition. Is idle true. Make magic time. Make transition. Make transition. Is idle true. Bow. Make transition. Grab this. Is idle true. Intriguing. Make transition. Is idle true. Didn't wrap this up. Make it easy. Interesting. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. So drag that there and now we have animations that lead into the idle animation so the moment this is done close the idle animation make sure the idle animation itself is set to loop yes so once we're done now now we need state so i'm going to go ahead and create a few states called triggers and i'm going to start with in trig Actually, called intrigue. Intrigue. Make another state. Make that trigger. Bow. Make sure actually not let me. A bad habit of not naming things right. So bow, make that capital. Make sure that intrigue is the condition is set to intrigue. Make sure the bow is set to bow. And do this as you go for each one because it's much better instead of having to do it to do everything at the end. So go ahead and say check time. Time, check time, make transition, check time, to grab that, check time, make another one, trigger, check out, make transition, check out, grab this, grab that, scroll down, check out, you want to call it, look here, make transition, look here, grab this, and then scroll down, look here, this one is a trigger, agree, and grab that, make transition to agree, grab that, we're going to change that to agree, another trigger, call it, disagree, Transition, select that, disagree, go ahead and say, go here down here, conditions, disagree. Ta-da, now we have transitions. Now, there, now we have a method to switch between the animations. Now, you might be wondering, what the heck, we have such large code and we can't do anything with it. Well, we'll get, we'll get to it, no worries. With that being said, let's go ahead and make the next bit of code. Alrighty, so now I'm gonna go ahead and create the animation controller for Natori. Now we've actually got the animator down and we have triggers set up. However, we don't have a way to get those animations up and running. So let's go ahead into the script and we're gonna go ahead and create you not know set Natori, minimize everything. Yeah, let's create a new script. Call it um, char anim. Yeah, like you can call it whatever you want. I want to. I'm, I'm going to call it char anim because it's short for that animation. Well, that's doing while Visual Studio is doing its thing. I'm going to go ahead and attach my animation call it to attach the animation script to the story. So, Natori, 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 Natori. I don't quite know how you pronounce it in Japanese because Jap the Japanese language runs on a fanatic kind of sound system. So, like, if you have, if you have individual sounds, so Natori's name would be like Natori, Natori, like Nato and Ri, three characters. A little bit of Japanese trivia, I guess, for you guys who don't know. Anyway, now that we are looking at Natori, we are going to 
the hell you at, man? Or regardless, it doesn't really matter if I see you or not. So grab China, drag drop you under, control save. Make sure that Nathori on an RC has China on him. Lovely. You just go ahead and start writing China. So we're going to go ahead and open up Hack China on in Visual Studio. Now, first of all, we had to mention our animator. So let me see animator. Do I import anything? I don't think so, no. Public animator. Call it cha. Yeah, so we have an animation controller, an animation controller. Anim yeah, that's about that sounds about right. And we're gonna go ahead and create. Okay, so here's a tricky part. Yeah, we can go ahead and say, um, no, right. So this is the here's a tricky part. We need to get a reference. Which not no. We'll get to the we'll get to the, we'll get expressions later. So let's go ahead and do your standard animations. So let's just go ahead and we don't need we for this we won't be needing a start and update. It's really not required, and we're just gonna go ahead and say um public void character motion motion. We're gonna pass a string through it, so string motion. So this motion is the name of the is the name of the motion or the motion of the animation we want to play. So you know what? Um, no, let's keep it that way. Motion name. Let's play, let's call it that, shall we? We're just gonna go and say try and controller dot Set trigger. This am I calling that? No, am I calling that? No, I'm just going to say animation name. And there we go, we have animation name. Now, the idea is that since this, since this is attached to Natori, if we go on to Natori, like if I pull up Natori. Um, hello, Jimmy. Are we gonna? So if I pull up Natori, grab him. We have the animation controller here. Yeah? We just add the animator, so we just grab and drag that in there, and we have a reference to itself. You know what? I did mention we don't need to see, we don't need to start start method, but you know what? We're gonna do that. We are gonna have a start method. Pub. No, just void start. Um, put up, let's do that and then just say um, if I'm correct char and in controller is equal to get component animator that should be good so if I go ahead to inventory and say hey I'm just I'm gonna go ahead go ahead and delete this. And if I am not mistaken, it should set it up for itself. If not, we just have to set it up for itself, but you know, we we'll, we'll let it go and drag it in, but really it's not much I mean it is a bit of it, 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 if for the sake of convenience, so be it. Sake of convenience and making things faster. So we go ahead and spawn the Tori. And it this should set itself to be its own thing. There we go. And he is animating, you can see his arm. You know what? Let's make him what? 10. 10. You can see his arms moving. Let's actually make him much better. Let's make him bigger. 
हम डिफॉल्ट भी कर रहे In the scene, we put on the side. Victory. For twelve. She will position him just right. She grab him. I put him at minus five. Four point five. Yeah, minus four point five works. X zero Z zero perfect. So now we have a perfect animated notary up on screen, and all I do is just drag the script on him. It's amazing, honestly. There we go. Look at him. Look at it. Look at him in all his beauty. And our script's working fine. We have that little bit down. Now we need to start setting triggers. So let's hop back into our script reader and we're going to create another method. This method we're going to call public play animation. Actually, character anim. Public void say cat anim, and within that, wait, not a body. Public void cat anim. Inside, since we did ask for motion, like a string motion, we'll go ahead and actually, you know, do that. Now, here's the thing, right? We can't just go ahead and say, "Hey, string, like do this string motion, like do this motion," because we have no idea what game object we're referring to in, in the scene. So if you go into the go back to our scene, Natori himself is a game object, like in the scene. But issue is we don't have a reference in Natori, and we could easily fix this by going ahead and going ahead and having going ahead and creating a reference to him in Unity. But honestly, that's a like we could create an array maybe and do something with it. But I to it, it's not the best idea to go ahead and do that. So let so I'm going to show you guys a much cooler way of doing it now. When we convert this to an external key binding, we want to be able to call it in such a way as this. We say, so for example, I'm going to say, but anyway, we sign an external key binding right, right off the bat. So, cat animation, and then say, I guess we say the name. Cat name and the animation name. So that's this is what we want to do. So when we actually do um, call it, we'll go ahead and say, um, in this case, try animation. Natori, Shamar. Um, agree. So this is how we want it to work, right? So for this, we need to have our character name and the trigger and the name of the trigger. So in our case, if we go in to Unity, go to our animator, we need to go ahead and pass the name of the trigger, which is one. And yes, yeah, so we have to go ahead and go ahead and pass the name of the trigger. And the character name. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do right just that. So we need a string char name, string anim, anim name. Under that, I'm just gonna go into here, go ahead and get the new brackets. So now we need to first find the game object, the relevant game object with the name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say game object. Actor is equal to game object dot find. Within find, we say our name. 
Now, what this does is essentially we say, hey, the moment I call this method, say, hey, find, like set this game object. So, we're like when you call it, you pass a, pass a name called a string name called char name, and you look for a game object in the scene with this name on it. So now consider it. So consider this to be an exact, the exact same thing as um, assigning a game object to Unity in the editor itself. So if I say game like public game object character and drag and drop Notorious character in it, like Notorious game object to the thing, same thing here. So now done. So now we're gonna go ahead and say not for the sake of for no we don't you not why not. For the, for the sake of debugging, we're going to say debug dot log character dot name. So now we know like the like the name of the thing that is selected. So if all goes well, it should this it should display notory when we play. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and say character dot get component and the component we're looking for is the char anim script so char anim and in char anim we go ahead and say we want to do this we want we want to we want to run this method so we'll do that we'll just go and say char anim dot character sorry i'm not mistaken Character motion. And in that we just say anim name and voila. Voila. Oh, I almost forgot. There we go. So with that we go ahead and just we, we we've gone ahead and done our thing. Uh, so as a reference, generally, I like to go ahead and grab this whole thing, control C, go up here, um, two flashes, control V. Also, at the end of the last tutorial, I did realize that I need a display next line so that I don't get the sample text initially. So you might want to do that as well on load story so that you automatically play this, so it's automatically play the story. I'm gonna, so as we've done before, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. This time I'm going to go ahead and say chi anim because chi animation. So grab this, control C, control V, string chi name, then string anim name, chi name, anim name. Grab this, play anim, play cat anim, and we're done. Pretty much done, yeah. Now with that said, let's go ahead and test this, shall we? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the names. So what I generally recommend is you taking a look at the animation controller for the relevant you know, for the relevant character when you're actually pulling putting down animations. Or it would be better if you just write it down. So you could have like an Excel sheet maybe and just say um, Natori and then you can have his triggers listed out on that. That is a good idea usually. Um, I'm going to grab this, Control C. Intrigue, let's go bow. The movie says something. Um, check. So space check time. There is no space there, correct? There is no space there. Well, let me fix the trap card as well. Check time. Next thing he says, control V. Trap card. Change this to look here.
and the last one is going to be just another line here. Let's see, we've already done trap card look here. Disagree. And since I like trap card a lot, because you know, it's the state's a standard anime character with glasses thing. Yeah, hey, draw V. Draw V. Right. Shino. This here. Drop down. With that said, we have animations for Notori on each and every single each each and every single line. So let's go ahead and explore that, shall we? So if you have one to plan and there are no my code, we'll have a beautiful, beautiful line Notori. I did have this in the tutorial actually. So there we go. Agree. Oh, he's intrigued. He's bowing. Checking his checking his time. Oh. <laughs> You've activated my trap card. Look here. No. Trap card. You've activated my trap card. You've activated my trap card. So yeah. With all of that, we have a very well animated Notori. And it was actually really damn simple. Alright. Now that we have his animations done, we need to change his expressions. You know, I mean, like, expressions, what are those? And, well, fear not my fellow viewer, dear viewer, Notori has expressions. So, if you have expressions like, oh, if there's a neutral expression, like, simply put, it's going to be very easy to, it's, 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 it's actually very easy to implement. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to China again. And this is the point where we talk about expressions. Public void. Alright, so before we before we actually do a public void, whatever. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and get you know, define ourselves an expression controller. So we can oh wait, before we actually define the expression controller, let's actually take a peek at Notori and how we handle expressions on him. So we go to Notori, right? We have the expression controller. And you will see this script on him called expression controller. Now this essentially what it does is that it hosts a ho is that this is supposed to host a list of expressions. Expressions are not an, are not animations. In fact, they're kind they're sort of like a JSON like they're similar to they're so they're, they're sort of JSON file. And in this expression list, you have the expressions that you make. So whatever expressions you make on your live 2D model over here, they get converted into um a list. An array, a list. I think they're the same in T Sharp actually, but you get a list of them here, and they get swapped and they get filled in. So essentially, these expressions are values which you can, which Notori actually can go through. So if I, if I am not mistaken, we have the mouth controller that that changes based on the thingy. Yeah, the blink controller, and it's the parameters. Essentially, expressions can, expressions hold parameter values is the best way to put it. Once those per and essentially an expression goes ahead and edits the information in a, per in a parameter and the body animates it. But you know, now they're complicated again. So make sure you have the expression set for the character. Now this is of course something you'd have to do for each character prefab. There's no way around that. So. You, you, you make sure you do that at the start of every character. But now we need to refer. We need to refer to the script, right? And we can't just go ahead and directly refer to it because it is not a Unity script, right? All right. So what you can do now is you can go up here and say select another um, using the, the directive. Basically, access another frame like to access a namespace. What we can do is we're going to go five two D dot Cubism dot framework dot expression dot yeah cubism dot expression that should be the end of that. If I go down here, I can say public cubism expression controller. 
expression true that what the heck why did i call it that was there a thing already set on here anyway expression controller now all we have to do is literally just change the current expression so we're going to say expression controller equal to get component um i get component cubism expression controller and and a semicolon there i'm gonna actually zoom into my code if you guys can't see it better so if we'd see it better but expression controller make sure you use this name space it's honestly a lifesaver once you have that down it's another simple method so you see public void Character expression, and this time we pass an int. So int expression. Next, we go ahead and um, add our code in here in, into this method, and just say expression controller dot current expression index is equal to in no is equal to expression and just end it off there so by doing this essentially we go on here prefab has been changed on this yes keep changes so essentially we access current expression index so let me actually <coughs> show what that does if I play thing then again this is just directed for what so now in our scene we grab Natori we go in here and say we want expression three no um how about we get expression 10, yeah. Oh, wait, we have not referred to this expression list. Expression 10. Wait. Um. Alrighty. Okay, okay, right. So now that we have our expression list, yes, let me just explain how the expression list in Unity works, no, in Type 2D works. So we're going to load up my scene. Going to make this a bit bigger. And we have animation, right? And we say we want expression 10, it changes it. So we want expression nine. We want expression five. We want expression two. We want expression six. Yeah, so that's how it works. Now the idea is that we that, that this expression value is what determines what expression Natori has. So quite literally what we're doing is we refer to this specifically and say, hey, you are no longer like you are no longer one, you are zero. You're no longer minus one, you have something else. So that's how that starts. Not that complicated, honestly. Because expressions start from minus of zero to something else. So. Now the expressions you might want to write down and hand to your writers, maybe. Or if you are right, if you are the writer developing on a like writer and developer, it would be amazing if you were to actually write this information down. Because the expressions actually do matter. Is a num like it's just a number, so it's going to, we're just going to do the same in Unity. We're going to go into our script reader. So similar to what we did before, in the like similar similar to what we, what we did before in play character anime, we're just going to do something similar. So public no not plain public 
void um character question no change character expression now with that we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and pass string tonin the next thing is in expression number and quite literally we're going to go ahead and see what well, let's actually copy the code we did in the last bit grab that is that in here so we have game object character is equal to game object dot find character name in debug dot log character dot name so we know what so, so that we know that you know it's the right you know what character name plus you can see so you see changing so changing of this expression actually grab this little bit and actually change it up here as well animation to plus anime name to plus expression number and there we go we just go ahead and see that then the space here so now we know what to change it to i mean you, you don't like you can actually skip past skip past this little bit you don't need it but i like to have a little bit of debugging so you know i know what i'm i have an idea of what, what how things go on so now we just go character dot get component char anim that dot character expression and then we say expression number semicolon and well we're done so now what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through this we're going we're to actually do the same thing we did before and copy this go up to load script and then put this down put that there go to here, go here control d duplicate it say Cat expression, chai expression, um, cat name. This would be an int. We say, um, expression int. Grab this, control C, control V. What is up? Cannot convert int. All right. Let me see. Grab, we grab this here. Change character expression. Change that to the thing. And there we go. So your final line would be underscore script dot bind bind external function character expression string character name int expression in blah blah. Anyway, you like you you get what I mean. Go ahead and zoom out the code a little bit so you can actually take a look at it. Uh, go ahead and get a good look at it. I'm going to remove this line, of course, because you don't need it. And once now that you have it, you can use it in your project. There we go. Now let's go ahead and test it, shall we? So let's cycle through emotions, what? 0 to 10. So if, yeah, so we'll, we'll actually cycle through 0 to 10. So if you see, no. We'll actually go ahead and uh, bind the external function. So external char expression char name 
expression in That should be the same on here. So character expression, character name, expression int. So now let's go ahead and um, down here. Let's actually zoom in just a bit. Oh, can't zoom in. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Let me say character expression. Natori. One zero. So grab that, control C, drop it down here, control V, so make it one, control V, let's make it two, control V, let's make it three, control V, we'll make it four, control V, we'll make it five. Control V will make it six. Control V will make it seven. Control V will make it eight. Control V will make this nine. So now that we have like what do you call it? Why do we not get a zoom next pull up and down? Okay. Regardless, we have like so we have all that now. So, so that I have expressions, so exactly. Let's actually go ahead and test it. I do believe I might get an error, but we'll find out soon enough. I'm gonna have my notary prefab open so I can see how this changes. And once it does open, so cat expression zero. Fact expression one, fact expression two, so it changes. Fact expression three, fact expression four, fact expression five, fact expression six, fact expression seven, fact expression eight, fact expression nine. Haha, <laughs> that's all folks. So yeah, there we go. Now we have the next half. Of this done, we have live 2D characters who, who who can change expressions and the animation. Hi there, how are things doing? Uh, it's been quite a while since we last spoke. Um, I don't think we spoke at all actually, but yeah, as you can see, here I have a YouTube avatar now. It's he's cool. He's called Melon Senpai. I am Melon Senpai now. So that's that. And um, apart from that, I hope this tutorial was good. Because if you did enjoy it, I am very grateful. And I would hope that you, as an interviewer, yes, you. I I don't have hand tracking, so I can't really um, move my hand towards you and say hey, thanks, and whatnot. So I I hope like the head tilting would. But yes, um, thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you did like it, I would highly appreciate a subscription. If you subscribe, that would be nice. But if not, you know, that's all good. Anyway, just a little update on where I've been for the past two months. A lot of stuff happened in real life. Uh, how do I put it? Uh, someone close to me passed away, so December was a crazy month. Apart from that, took part in the game jam. Uh, I mean, if you want to try out a really crappy game which you made in December, was not an easy month at all. It's in the description. It's called Honk Game About a Goose. And this tutorial, I it was a bit long because it um because we talk mostly about live 2D and whatnot. So. As that and it was actually pretty cool. Had a had a lot of fun editing it, so there was that. And I hope that it that you guys found it useful because I think that I personally would have liked to had have a tutorial when I was researching this topic. But apart from that, I won't take too much of your time. Um, I'll just be here. But thank you for watching. If you did like the video, 
as a subscription would with you subscribing would make my day seeing that number that the, the, the little subscribe number sub, subscribers number go up really really does feed my ego <laughs> i mean apart from that right at least i started this channel with like nine subscribers most of them were my family and here we are at 107 108 I think the number does go up daily. That's concerning because I wonder where you people come from. But since you guys did apparently like it, like my content, I'm going to make more of an effort in 2022 to, you know, get more content. Because apparently people like the way I teach. And let's start by finishing this tutorial series. So keep an eye out for the next episode, which will be dropping next week on the 22nd of January 2022. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I won't take too much of your time. There'll be a video over here, like I don't know, to the left, right? Yes, I'm like over, over here maybe. I like, guess like a tutorial, like a link to the tutorial to the whole playlist, a video that you might like, subscriptions. But yes, I, I, I hope you enjoy all the jazz. Apart from that, Thank you for showing up this video, show, showing up and showing up at the end. I really do appreciate it. All right, then. I'll see you next time.